So then I will call this meeting to order. Pursuant to the applicable law and the determination that attendance by remote means is necessary because an in-person meeting is not practical nor prudent due to the declared public health disaster caused by COVID-19, this meeting is being conducted by video conference. The meeting is being recorded and is available at um, www.downtownhydeparkchicago.com and on YouTube. Okay, so um, I believe our first order of business is the, uh, the contracts. Okay. Um, let me go over this very quickly. I'm going to share my screen. I made you the whole spread. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. This was an email that I sent out um, the other week, basically more or less breaking down the difference between last year's and this year's contract. Uh, what I asked for our vendors to do was extend their contracts. So they should look exactly other than dates and pricing um, like they did the year previously. So I'll just go over each one of them individually. The first one with Clarence Davids with floral. Um, the dollar amounts are different. Um, and some of this is inflation. Uh, the Clarence Davids email, I'm sorry, the Clarence Davids contracts, they are manual for the previous year versus nine months for this year. But Clarence Davids fits within the year. So their floral is, is basically, you look at it, uh, the difference are, differences are probably just the seasonal flowers, uh, but the prices have gone up. Um, just you look at it, it's like this more or less within inflation. The same with the second contract, where it's gone up from 11,135 to 11,880. Um, it's within the calendar year. Clean slate. Um, it's lower from the year before, but clean slate the year prior was a 12 month annual term where this year it's a nine month difference. Um, advanced clean pro, what you see is kind of within inflation, but their contract is within the entire year. Um, we broke this last year into spring and autumn because of the late disbursements. And we didn't perform the autumn cleaning for savings of over $10,000, but $10,000. But basically, the um, contracts are essentially the same. Is there any questions regarding the, the, the contracts or the proposals? Okay. Um, Mary, I'll turn it back over to you. Uh, okay. Point, yeah, what we need to ask from the commissioners is a motion and a second. Uh, um, do we have to vote on each contract separately or can we vote on all four at the same time? Um, for the record, we could probably vote on each one separately. Um, okay. It's, it's more or less up to the commissioners. Um, I guess it depends on the motion. It could include all of them. Or just right. One at a time. Okay. Well, would someone like to make a motion? I make a motion to vote all at once. I second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of voting on all four at once, um, indicate by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Anyone abstaining? Okay, so now we now I would now like, I would to, like enter, to now I'd like to entertain a motion to vote on the contracts, whether or not to accept the contracts. Can someone give me a motion on that? I motion for contract acceptance. Now second. Okay. Discussion. All in favor, aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Great. Contracts have passed unanimously. Contract extensions. Great. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now we can go on to the um, the initiatives, the progress report. Okay. In terms of the progress report, uh, there hasn't been a lot of progress. One of the things I have to do is I have to get with James for 55th Street and talk about initiatives there. Um, James, I will do that very soon, perhaps today, definitely this week. <laughs> okay, uh, can I just interrupt really quick? Do we need me for anything else? If I leave the quorum, is that gonna mess anything else up? Can I go? You can go, thank you for being okay. here. Right. Yeah, yes. absolutely, Rod, I will look forward to that conversation. Okay, I'll give you a call okay. and let you know when I'm gonna stop by. Okay, great. Sorry to dash on you. Thank you right. James, Thanks for bye. being here. Hi, James. Yes, and this is a note to all commissioners that this is the portion of the meeting. We will now move more into the program committee agenda. Yeah. And you're welcome to stay. And uh, we definitely appreciate your being here for the vote. Yes. Okay, Rod, you can continue. Okay, basically, um, we are moving right along. We're just continuing to investigate uh, the various initiatives. Um, we're meeting with the stewards of the art. We're meeting also with Nichols Park. Um, we're still looking at the um, RFP in terms of what Clarence Davids uh, did for us. George, you'd sent that in and I'd sent that back to them. So more or less things are, are moving along. We expect more action within the next month. Definitely keep you all apprised of that. Um, so that, that's more or less the, the progress report on that. Um, I wanted to get these contracts out of the way so we could spend a lot more time on that. And, and we've done that. <laughs> so any Rod, questions? Would it help you to have any kind of um, input at this point from the commissioners, since we have more of them here than we usually do? Uh, any and all input is welcome. So is there a specific area you're looking for that input? Um, well, actually there is one. Um, mm -hmm. We had asked that people give us their rankings about the, the five areas where to put the priorities. And we only heard from four people, one of whom was me, and one of whom was Greg. So we've, we would love to hear from the rest of you about what you consider the priorities. That includes you, George. <laughs> I, I sent in my results, right. I sent in my poll. I voted, I thought the order in which they were listed in the email that went out was exactly the right order. So. Okay, I didn't get that email, oh, so. Sorry. Right. Yeah. But Mary, I think it was about five commissioners, so that constituted well, form. George um, would have been the fifth. And, and it was an email thread, wasn't it? Wasn't it an email vote? I believe I submitted mine as well. Yes, you did. You did yes, too, you Anthony, did. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I could give you a, I could send out an email of the breakdown, but overwhelmingly, I think with the exception of one commissioner who may have switched the order of a couple, it was more or less unanimous the way it was presented. Mm -hmm. um, so if you need a more defined breakdown, I could do that. But I mean, it's not going to change what everybody's asked for. I think we all went down the order. Charles, I believe you submitted one as, as well. Uh, but more or less the order it was presented is the order that everyone um, would like to see. Great. Okay. Um, so on those, any of those five items, does any, uh, George, go ahead. Sorry, I just, I just had a question while um, Rod was discussing general issues with the priorities. And that is if there is a, are, are, are you able to formulate a plan. You don't need to go into detail. I'm just curious about how to tackle, where to begin with the viaducts. Yes. Um, 
What Diane and I did uh, the prior week is we called the stewards of the Art Chicago Public Arts Group and initiated a discussion with them, um, Shaka Mitchell. Um, we were able to get him to come along for part of the tour. And what we did was we looked at the art, we looked at the condition of the art, we looked at the viaducts. Uh, more importantly, we found out who kind of owns the art because that's going to be a big issue coming up. Um, with the viaducts themselves, we discussed, you know, who owns what side, Metro one side, Canadian National the other, and we already know where the battles are. The last thing we need to do is settle the outcome of today. So sometime either tonight or the next several days or so, we'll know who the older persons are, we'll know who the mayor is, and those are a very important component in terms of the stakeholders deciding what goes next. So progress is, is, is really happening. Some of those things, for instance, the Viadoc, there are multiple stakeholders and we just have to get them all in place. Are you aware that there was some work done on the, um, on the viaducts just this past week? The city mm -hmm. was out and they did something um, on the west end, both sides of the west end of the 53rd Street viaduct. Um, and it had something to do with the drains. So there, there's new concrete down there. No, I was not aware. Uh, one of the things in particular with the new aldermen is to make sure that we stay in close contact with their um, chiefs of staff because they generally know the projects that are coming to their ward. Um, but we have to keep a closer eye on that. Okay. Great. Yeah, that's, that, that's where the aldermanic elections and things like that become really important in terms of in February, if we could have a person, we know who to talk to. I mean, there are some other things, Mary, that we need to talk to the older persons about. And talking to candidates is a lot different than talking to office holders. Right. And it's going to take them a little while to get into their new offices. So if there's anything that you need from us that we can do as groundwork before that point, um, please let us know. Uh, with that and the reconstitution, we're going to need all hands on deck, all of our yeah. projects, we're, we're all hands. So if there is yeah. any influence you have with the next older persons and mayor, we welcome that uh, because we've got a lot of work to do in a very short period of time. Diane. Thanks. I just wanted to chime in a little bit about the viaducts discussion, because obviously the viaducts are really important to to all of us um, for walkability and safety and brightness. So a couple of things, obviously, like we met with the Chicago Public Arts Group because we're trying to think about what can be actually attainable this year with our TIF rebate dollars and also like our budget, right? And so um, this past week, Brad and I attended a conference in Boston, which is National Main Street. And one of the sessions that I attended was master planning. And so really, uh, as the executive director of SCCC and service provider of the SSA, definitely thinking about master planning for all of our viaducts in the area and also what do we need to make that happen. So really building our toolbox on how to do that. If anyone has any suggestions about project management tools that I could use to start to build out this vision, um, that would be really helpful. Um, and then also... Um, on a side note, I did not know about the improvements that were being done at 53rd, but it makes sense because it's spring and the water and there's an issue. But um, uh, a request has gone into 4th and 5th Ward for both 53rd and 55th Street from my office to look at the light bulbs that are out because sometimes some of those light bulbs, they're just out. They need to be changed. And if those, you know, so starting to get those things moving, just simple requesting and putting it out there. Um, is a good start. So that's kind of where we're at with viaducts. And then Greg and Shaka have um, both shown uh, interest and commitment to helping move um, 
that project forward and looking at what is attainable for this year. So we're pretty excited. Um, something that on that walk we were discussing uh, that we took, um, we did notice the pigeons at 55th. They are like ro roosted up, you know, they're really like posted up. They looked at us like, oh, you, you know, like they didn't even move. We're like, okay, you know, we obviously have a problem. So there needs to be some um, pigeon, pigeon removal program or abatement, or I don't really know what's the best way to, but I think that it's nothing new. So how do we like, that's something that's going to have to definitely happen. So that's kind of just an update of where we're at. And I took a lot of pictures. So if anyone's interested in seeing, I can send them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to add to what Diane said. I found out an interesting fact in terms of the pigeons. I was at a session in um, Concord, New Hampshire. And one of the council persons who was doing our tour pointed up to some tall um, ornament on top of a building. And she said, that's an owl. It's like, you have an owl there? She said, yeah, what we notice is that the owls keep the pigeons away. Now, I'm not sure how we would fashion that under a viaduct. But she said the owls kept the pigeons away. They'd have to move the owls. Um, but um, in, in, in looking at that, you know, ways to how do we keep the viaducts clean, you all had me look into an extra viaduct cleaning. So I'm going to present that to you a little bit later. And we also have to do an education piece. Some of my fellow SSA program managers have those same problems where you have people feeding the pigeons and they leave a mess. And we just have to ask people to help us maintain those viaducts and not do things that would keep them dirty and make us spend even more money trying to keep them clean. But we, we came back with a lot of ideas. It, it was a fantastic trip. And we're looking forward to, Diane and I have been discussing them and seeing how we can implement them within the SSA. That's great. Uh, this, this owl that you're talking about, was it a real one or a fake? It was a fake owl. Okay. Okay. Because one of the reasons that the pigeons are under the viaduct is because there are um, hawks and falcon, uh, yeah, hawks uh, in the area. And I've actually seen them capture pigeons under the viaduct, um, but on the other side in the, in the stairwell. So that's why they stay where they are. So they're staying away from where the hawks can catch them. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm envisioning that something that we put up and kind of keep to ourselves, because I'm sure if we put things like hawks or owls, um, somebody's going to try to defeat them. I mean, Mary, I think you and I, maybe a couple of other people were on Good Neighbors, the listserv. Yeah. And we understand, George, <laughs> we understand how people feel about um birds or really cats or any kind of pets, but there is a following out there for birds of any kind. So we have to be strategic about this. We have to educate people and we have to keep our viaducts clean. <laughs> right. So if anyone in this group is connected to like someone that's, I know people are going to laugh because they know somebody who's a birder in our area, have them reach out to us because maybe they have some suggestions about remediation or relocation or if someone wants to adopt a pigeon. I don't know. Yeah. And it's Craziness. not just it's not just a birding issue. It's there's it's I hate to say this, but it's something of a mental health issue as well. There's a couple of people who are devoted to the pigeons, the ones who are out feeding them, and they despise other birds, they want to kill the falcons and the hawks because they think they're decimating the pigeons. Um, most, most of us, I'm a diehard bird watcher. Most of us love the hawks and the falcons, and um, don't, you know, we don't we don't mind if an occasional pigeon is taken for breakfast. But these these people are rather adamant about saving the pigeons in Hyde Park. Yeah. Okay, are there any other, is there any other input on any of the other projects? Charles, do you have um, any, is there anything 
going on down at the West End that we should know about? A uh, good point. <clears throat> we're diligently working on, as soon as weather clears up, we're going to get some things done with the parking lot. I saw the comments in the Herald about how sad it is. <laughs> But we we working on that. As soon as the weather clear up, we should be able to get that cleared up. And uh, I just ran into one of the uh, musicians from the National Fund Foundation of Arts and Science uh, yesterday concerning they wanted to be serious about doing some uh, entertainment in that codex yeah. there between uh, uh, Leona's and uh, CVS. So I'm not supposed to give them a call sometime this week and again, we schedule something for that. Great. Another question that I have um, is about the construction work that's going to be happening um, at uh, Harper Court. Is that going to affect our work on the viaducts? Because um, I imagine there's going to be heavy equipment around. I don't see how it would. We been in some of those meetings and we've talked to um, university, um, talked to Angie about that. And they are gonna try and contain that as, as much as possible because they still want the concert series, the, the summer concert series and the music that they have there. So they're gonna try and minimize that even on their location. So having it spread out even okay. further would yeah, so to give problem. a little bit more specific information from those meetings, if some of us recall when they came to present, they had a traffic flow pattern for all construction vehicles coming in through 55th. They're not going to be able to fit under the viaduct. They're trying to stay right. off of Lake Park. So there'll be a whole kind of in and out plan to reduce the number of construction vehicles in the area. And they're about to start this new phase. Obviously, there's been more news about it. So this is a great time for us to try to get them to come back to one of our SSA meetings and let us know what's going on. I'll make a note. Yeah, yeah. Right. let me back up to Charles because uh, I had some discussions actually at the Woodlawn Summit about a tree on, or tree plantings. I had met with a group of AKAs and I need to reach back out because she was supposed to reach out to me with her information. But she had interest in planting trees. They were looking for a project. I know you're looking for a project. And I know that um, Augustana Church and the family is looking for a tree planting in that area. So our original plan was to hook all of you all up and talk about it. But the um, lady who was a part of that project never got back with me. But I think it's real interesting. You've got groups out here who want to do tree plantings. You've got a spot for it. Um, Augustana, um, they, they're behind the project, the Keith Cooper project that wants that memorial tree. So I'll try and get all of you all together again so that we can move forward on that. Um, and meanwhile, you and I have to continue our talk on how we're going to do some of the landscaping work or beautification work along Kimbark Plaza. And I guess you all should know this, but there's this little known fact that part of Woodlawn from just what, what Elm Park all the way to 53rd Street is also part of the SSA. So we can also look into doing some work on that side as, as well. Great. We'd love to get together on that because spring is here. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any anything else that any of the commissioners would like to add to this conversation? Is, oh, yes. Is, Go ahead, George. Yeah. While I'm while while I'm thinking about this, uh, I wanted to ask Charles. Would anyone object if I went over to your the little garden that's now at the corner of Woodlawn and 53rd and did some gardening there? It needs the dead stuff needs to be cut back. And there's not a lot. It'll, you know, it's an hour's worth of work and I have some additional things I like to plant in there to fill it in a little bit. Is that okay? Will the guards arrest me? No, if they do, they would get arrested. So <laughs> please come, come and enjoy. Yeah, good. I would say do your thing. <laughs> Great. 
Let, let him know, let him, Charles, let him know he's coming. I'll let security know that we, we got help coming, so don't mess with him. <laughs> I'll do that. Great. I was on uh, Belmont Avenue uh, Saturday night, um, and I just had noticed uh, they put, um, they strung lights over, over the street between the buildings. And I think we've all seen it before in other neighborhoods, but I, it's pretty dramatic and nice. Just thought I'd point that out if you're ever in that neighborhood. Um, they, they strung them over Belmont? Yeah. There's like, it's actually on Sheffield, on that corner. Okay. But it was like, um, it made sort of a, brought a quaintness to a pretty like urban vibe. It was great. Hmm. That reminds me of something else I saw on the north side this weekend. Um, someone had taken what looks like eggs, you know, artificial eggs, and they had strung them, hanging them down from, um, from a tree and the light was catching it and just reflecting all over the place. It was quite dramatic. It was very large. Like um, a neighbor had done that or the, like a- A, a neighborhood had done it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Greg, I'll look into that more than likely. That's part of an SSA. So I will, I will uh, reach out to that area and found, find out what they, did the process that they went through to get something like that. But more than likely, Belmont and Shedfield is part of an SSA. So it's real easy to reach out to them and say, um, what's, is that, that's Lincoln Park, right? Lakeview. Lake, yeah. It's Lakeview? Okay. Yeah, it's more likely part of an SSA. Yeah, and I mentioned, by the way, I didn't love the, the, the bulbs they chose. I'm not saying we should replicate it, but I... The fact that they were able to get it done, I thought was um, was good. I mean, it, it looked good. I just, I don't think it's not perfect for Hyde Park. It's just a good um, right. Well, take for us. The, the important thing there is for something like that, we all go through the same process. We go mm -hmm. through the same people. Just the aldermanic support and probably the the neighbors are a little bit different, but we all go through the same processes and the same people. Um, so I'll reach out to them and see how they got that done. Okay. Roger, I think you're the only, um, non-commissioner on, uh, do you have any questions or comments, anything you'd like to say? Yeah. First thing is, uh, sorry to be cynical, but if you're going to hold a program committee meeting, you should use the link for the program committee, not the commissioners. That's why I had trouble, couldn't get in. Roger, that was my mistake. I apologize for that. So the next program committee meeting, you will have the proper link as finance and commissioners meeting. So that was my mistake. I apologize. What I'd like to see is a piece of paper or an email that has the links that the rep, the repeating links for all the committees. So I have them all in one place. They are repeating links, right? That's correct. Yeah. So uh, my co comment on based on what I heard is Mary, you talked about there was a poll, but you didn't share the results. Uh, well, we just did. Um, no, Roger. You said, the, you said uh, the results were everybody went with the order in the poll. And I don't. Um, Rod, that. I don't have that list in front of me. Right. Let, let me let me answer Roger on that. Um, first of all, Roger, um, the poll is still kind of open because Mary is still soliciting. She wants that from all commissioners. So. And till we close the poll, um, I think that all commissioners, I can put out a last call to say for all commissioners, she just asked me to discuss where we were at this point. So um, when we can't close the post, poll- Can't you reveal the results of the poll so far? I did in this meeting. Um, I think it's probably better to close the poll 
because it, it's been open for a while. We asked for it earlier and then we had to send out another call. I think it's important that we get all information from all commissioners. Um, I mean, I've given you the overall overwhelming results, but I would like to close the poll um, when Mary and Anthony feel that the poll, you know, we've, we've given enough time and then I'd like to publish the results then. But at this point, I was reporting what's in progress. I'm trying to tell you, your communication isn't working for me. Um, Rod, what what Roger's asking for is what's what are the, the what are the five areas? Um, if you just list them in the order that we sent them out, I think that would I think that would answer Roger's question. And okay. I don't have that list. Okay. Yeah. Can't you put it up on the screen? Um. Let me try and find viaducts. Well, yeah, it's the, number one. Lake Park Avenue is number two. Cambark Plaza was number three. Nichols Park was number four. And east of the viaducts, 53rd and 55th Street was number five. Right. I'm 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 gonna go look for another agenda because they are in the order in another agenda. So like last month I had that. Uh George, you mentioned them. So it's Roger, I'll knowledge. Just it's the same thing we talked about, about in the commissioner's meeting and in the last mm -hmm. month's program committee right? as well. So Roger, just give me a moment and- mm, I, I heard George, that was fine. Okay. Um, so what's, I didn't hear anything so far, at least the part that I was in attendance at, with respect to what's happening with the, by, the uh, median on Lake Park. Did That's because we don't have, we're working on the plans and we don't have, we, we're collecting information at this point. So that's, so I heard about the viaducts. Okay, that's, you're collecting information on 50, on Lake Park. On, on all of the five. So five years ago, Roger, we got a proposal from Clarence Davids about upgrading the landscaping on Lake Park between 51st and 55th streets. Mm -hmm. They were involved tree trimming, putting in annual uh, seasonal plantings in the meeting, restoring the grass and the curbs and cleaning up along the train embankment. So we're trying to get an updated um, quote from Clarence Davids to see if we can't move forward with that because it, it's 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 pretty non-controversial and something that we've all agreed would improve the look of Lake Park. Okay. So if I'm hearing right, the vendor that made the prospective vendor that made a proposal five years ago has been requested to update their bid. Has that request been made, Rod? Yes. Yes. When do you expect to hear back? What? I'm doing at this point is I've heard from it. I'm going through the bid line by line to make sure that when we present to all the commissioners and the public, that um, it's consistent that with what was asked for. So yeah, it's it's updating a five year proposal. Um, and I wanna make sure that what we asked for today is even though we asked for it five years ago, kind of like the, the contracts, we wanted to know what the differences were. We need to know what the differences were between five years ago and what was asked for today. It's a fairly extensive proposal. So it's just gonna take some time for us to go through it. When do you plan to present it to a committee of the commissioners? Um, no later than the next programming meeting a month from now. Okay. What do you have planned for? What was the, that's the second item. No, that was the third item. Second item. What was the third item? I can go ahead West, and share screen. The West End. West End. What do you have planned for that specifically? That's what Charles was talking about. Up, upgrades. I only heard about Charles parking lot. Sorry. Okay. Oh, wrong one. I, I think this is talking about doing landscaping along the uh, the sidewalk on 53rd Street as well as Woodlawn. Probably that's what we was 
discussion? Yeah, we had talked about landscape improvements that we had done in previous years at 53rd and Woodlawn. Right. Roger, here is the order in which they were in the viaducts, the landscaping, Nichols Park, West 53rd Street and 55th Street. Okay. I, I, what I'm trying to, to find out, just as the new person who's here, you all have been talking about this, but I didn't hear it today. What What's planned for Nichols Park? We're looking at landscaping in Nichols Park. I've been going to the Nichols Park um, programming meetings that they have once a month. Uh, what they're looking at specifically are the lilacs in front and how to trim those and begin to maintain those. What I've asked Nichols Park to do is put together proposals because in order for us to look at it and evaluate it, we have to have a proposal of what they want to do. We have to get an ask uh, for them, or if they've got a project, we need to see how we can assist them with that project. So they're in the process of, of meeting and determining that. They put together a committee just for that. Uh, some of the things they are considering is landscaping beyond the SSA. So um, I told them that we can't really do anything outside the SSA boundaries, but I have been attending those meetings and they're looking to do some work fairly soon on the 53rd Street side. Okay, and what, what do you have planned for 55th Street east of the Viaduct? Uh, that's a meeting with Commissioner James Nurse. Um, I said earlier uh, in the meeting that we need to sit down and talk about what's going to happen on 55th Street. Okay. Thank you for the update. No problem. Rod, I didn't realize um, you're presenting the uh, the Lake Park medium strip um, project next next meeting. Great. The sooner we knock it out, the better. Um, I was, I guess I'm under the assumption that there'll be like multiple bids so we can see the context so that we know this is a good contract proposal or not, right? We discussed earlier, Clarence Davids was the one loan bidder several years ago. Uh, we can definitely put it out to bid, but I know that uh, several people, I believe Anthony, you had recommended Clarence Davids as well. So commissioners, we can put it out. We can do an RFP. What we did this time was we asked Clarence Davids to rebid on what they sent out. But if you want this to go out as an RFP to multiple oh, vendors, we can. How, how much is this? Do that. I'm sorry. How how what's like the uh, ballpark figure? How much would we be spending? Significant money, right? It would be significant money. Um, I don't have a ballpark figure with you on that. I wasn't really prepared to discuss that. Yeah, we don't um, need to because get we're still details. going through it. I mean, okay. But if a recommendation is being made that we should do an RP, right. then I think that's a right. that's a great recommendation. I don't uh, want to slow up the go ahead. Exactly. We'll slow up the process. We've already done an RFP. I mean, that that's the whole thing. We said we put it out for bid. The only bid we got was Clarence David's. It's likely to have the same results again. And I don't know of anyone else um who would be likely to bid on this at this point who wouldn't have done it five years ago so if we if we want to see action um, i i think we should look at clarence david's bid if it seems out of the ballpark unreasonable then we could always reopen up the bid process but since there's already been one bid process it seems unnecessary to have to go through another the ballpark figure originally my memory is that it was somewhere between 80 and ninety thousand. Okay, there. I'm just speaking for myself, Greg Gutman. There's no way that I would vote to approve a ninety thousand dollar project from one bidder. So what if there's only one bid? I wouldn't approve it. I mean, there's no. We're. It's one of the biggest cities in the country. There's no way that there. If we're putting our, a real effort into this, there's no way we only get one bid for a ninety thousand dollar project, for landscaping, no less. It's not like complicated, building a semi microchip 
Am right. I off? Am I off the reservation on this one, or do you guys think I'm out of line? You do. Okay. Let me ask this question. Um, is this something that would be better discussed? If we want this to go out to more bidders and do this, we can do that. But I think this is something that might be better discussed when we have the results to put in front of us so we can fully discuss it. I just, you know, if we're trying to make progress, Okay, I mean, look, we're all trying to make progress on this quickly. So I, if we can do multiple things at once, I think we should. Um, yeah, what, I, what I'd like to be personally, I'd like to be in a better position to discuss something, which means that I've kind of done my homework and I've looked it up. Um, I know we bring up a lot of things and, and that's what the program committee meetings are for. But when we start really getting into the nuts and bolts of things that I'm either just looking into or really are not prepared to bring up, um, we're going to get a lot of these kinds of discussions where it's just like, okay, we're going to spend time on it and we should, but it's probably better done if all the information is in front of us. So, Greg, if I mean, I can always put this out for an RFP and have a number of people. Rebid. I mean, can I, can I get a, can I get, does anyone, is, is anyone else have any opinion on this one? Well, one of the things that uh, has happened during the five years is that uh, ownership of Brightview, for example, changed and their quality went down dramatically. Um, so I, if, if they would be putting in a bid, I wouldn't accept that bid no matter what it was. Um, we know the quality of Clarence David's work and we've worked with them. And so, and we know that they're reliable. So I personally am inclined to go with Clarence David's. Um, I'm not aware of other, other landscapers in the area are small. And I don't know that they'd be willing to take on such a large project as what we're talking about. Um, I don't know, George, you may have more information about that. And most of the ones that I've worked with in Hyde Park are not very reliable. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would not recommend them. But Greg, who, who, do, who does Mac use for their landscaping? Uh, we, I believe we use Clarence David. We're the original people to recommend them, but, you know, they are a lot. And, and sure, they're not in Hyde Park, right? But like, we, you bring them to Hyde Park for 90,000 bucks, anyone's going to come to Hyde Park. Not any, you know, anyone in this line of work. There's a lot of landscape architects out there. Right. Let me say this. We have to measure, Greg, the, the, the point you're bringing up is very important, that we should increase our competition. But we also have to look at some other factors. One, we've got until the end of the year to spend this money. And in particular for landscaping, we have really over the next two or three months to spend it because it won't make sense to spend it in October. Um, so we, we've got a number of things that we have to consider. Um, as we discuss new vendors, we have to consider how we how well we trust them. So we, yeah. we also have an obligation to make sure that as we spend this public money, that um, not only do we spend it prudently and at the best cost, but will people get the work that we expected out of it? So there are a number of factors to consider. Um, these are things I'd like to bring up when I've been able to research a subject yeah. more. I mean, okay, but you guys, are, you're arguing that there's a ton of urgency to get this done. And on the other hand, I'm not seeing a lot of legwork of that urgency. You know, it's not like we've, it just feels like kind of passive, right? We asked them to update their bid from five years ago. We asked a while ago, didn't we? Like, and that's only from one one vendor. If there really is urgency, let's get on it. There is urgency, Greg. There is also a lot of projects in a short period of time, and the reality that all of the shareholders are all um, together and in place. If that were all the case, you'd see things moving a lot faster. Um, Diane and I, the staff, we, Raymond, we all are moving is as fast as we can. And I think at a pretty fast clip. 
So I, I think that urgency is there. I think the understanding is there. The, the stakes are there. And we all recognize that. So there is urgency, but there is also a lot on our plate in a short period of time. Um, and I think we are, I think we're acting with all due speed. Uh, there's there been another, way. there's been another complicating factor too, and that's that the both aldermen are changing and that we've ended up having runoffs. So this whole thing has been delayed by the election as well. Well, with all due respect, Mary, how does that impact landscaping? I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get because into we have to get system. permission from the city. So I, we have to get permissions from both wards to do the landscaping because it's city owned so property. Okay, so we we held waiting for an alderman to be elected, so then we could ask for their permission to spend the money in their ward. Okay. Greg, Greg, we, we closely work with the Department of Planning and Development and the Chiefs of Staff. Um, that's a reality we understand, and we here as the staff, we're working around that and, and trying to find creative ways to satisfy uh, what we have is a tsunami of time, money, and projects. And I think we're okay. moving at that deliberate speed. I mean, uh, one, are we concerned about the process of of uh, the bids in terms of most cases you get three bids for, for a project. Are we concerned about that? Are we dissatisfied with the work they're doing? Uh, do we think that they're overcharging us in some kind of way? What, I, I don't understand what the problem is. The problem is that we've never, we've never allocated a, a contract anywhere near this amount of money. And so for the biggest contract of our lives in our 10 year history, we're we're gonna do a no bid contract. In the spirit of trying to get things done, it's what we just voted on earlier. We asked for an extension of, of contracts for three of our vendors. One, because we know them, two, we're satisfied with their work. Um we we, we took the easy route on that. Now, should we have put all those things up for bid? We normally do, uh, but what we don't have is a normal year. We have a year in which the SSA is ending and we risk losing that money if we don't spend it. If we think the people that we have, because we've had them for years, are, are very good, we trust them. Um, that's not to say we shouldn't be diligent and make sure that they do the job that we do. That's, that's my job personally, to make sure of that. But there are a number of things to consider, Greg, and I'd like you to consider all of those things when we're ready to present all of that. Okay, so we need to bring this to a close. Um, it's five till 11 now. So um, we'll look forward to your report next month, Rod. Um, is it you're going to present it to the program committee first and then to the commissioners? Is that the plan? Um, that is the plan, but I may alter that and I'll talk with you and Anthony about that, depending on how quickly we can get things done. If we've got a commissioner's meeting coming up in a couple of weeks and we've got mm -hmm. a quorum, it's better to handle it there. We already know what mm -hmm. we're going to do. So that's a discussion I'll have with you and Anthony, and then we'll bring it up um, at the appropriate time, whether it's the next commissioner's meeting or it's the next programming committee meeting. Good. And okay. Greg, as, as chair, Greg, you'll be apprised of all of this. Um, and you are included in all of this. Yep. Well, look, I guess we have a month minimum before we have to talk about this again. So that gives us a lot of time to get more bids. Um, what I heard Rod say is that we may discuss it in two weeks at the commissioner's meeting, if the information is gathered. Sorry. I is, are we looking to have a vote at the next commissioner's meeting from the full commission on whether we are going to proceed with having a updated proposal or doing a new RFP? Is that what we're asking? Because I feel like we're going in circles. So what is it that we want to happen for the next meeting there is enough commissioners on this call for a quorum to make a decision 
it would be. But we could also be, take it to the full commission. George? It would be proper to bring the updated bid from Clarence Davids to the next commissioner's meeting, present it to the commissioners, and then get their feedback to see whether the commissioners think that it's adequate to proceed as is or whether we need to reopen the bidding process and go back to ground zero and request a new round of bids if we think that it's too expensive or too out. So the commission can decide whether we want to go ahead um, based on what we started five years ago or whether we want to um, re-examine the process because we think it's too expensive. Thank you, George. I like that. Mm -hmm. That sounds fair. Is everyone in agreement with that? I mean, my advice would be, we don't have to agree on it. My advice would be start now, but start lining up people who would are interested in the project and not wait two weeks to, to talk about whether we should start lining up people or not. But I understand, I understand what you're saying, George. But that's my, that's how I would approach it. Well, Greg, if you have any landscapers to suggest, uh, can you give us the information? I'm really out of that. Yeah, I can ask, but that I haven't I haven't worked on landscaping in. Okay, because I I've got two contacts of local landscapers that we could talk to and see if they're interested in putting in an RF or putting in a bid, um, but they weren't interested last time around, so. Um, and knowing who they are, I kind of doubt that they'd be interested this time, but we could at least ask. I'm just curious what, and what, well, I think we're out of time. I don't okay. want to. Mary, right. very, Mary, Mary, very quickly, how long do you want to keep the poll open? Um, uh, if we could close it this week, that would be great. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, if there's no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.